Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is going to be the first in, I don't know, a bunch of videos that we'll be covering some sort of, you know, beyond the beginner concepts in Git. And the first one today is about Git Bisect, which uh, is a tool that's useful to figure out when things changed in a repository. Usually it's used to find regressions where like between one version and another version, things got worse or broke or something. Um, and Git Bisect is a tool that helps you find when that change happened. Uh, the term bisect comes from splitting something in half, and it, it uses a like binary search-like algorithm to find when the things are bad. I'll actually, oh, I can show you a fun diagram of that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's jump into it, and I'll show you guys that. So, uh, the particular example that we're going to use today to drive this is, it comes from an issue on PyCodeStyle, which is a code linter, uh, and in an old version of PyCodeStyle, this uh, tab indented code would trigger a bug, or trigger an error, and at some point it was fixed. Uh, this issue doesn't actually mention when it was fixed, uh, but it was fixed on master, and you can see like if you run this command here with the particular ignore, that's the other code, so not E117, but W191, which is, <laughs> don't use tabs. Um, but yeah, that was fixed at some point, but I didn't figure out when it was fixed and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then this person asked, uh, can you point to when it was fixed? And Git Bisect is a perfect tool to figure this out, given that there's no other context in this. And I did eventually fi fi figure it out and there's there's the answer there, but we'll, we'll uh, redo the procedure that I did to find that problem today. Uh, let's actually kind of open up paint and uh, sort of diagram how this would look in in a um, in a git sense and kind of how git bisect works. Um, so you can imagine, let's use, oh, <laughs> bad at paint. Um, no, don't change the color of that line. I want a new line. All right, let's, let's say that we're bisecting a change and we know at this version it's bad and we know at um, this version that it was good. And so somewhere in between this good and bad version, we know that it became bad. And so what git bisect will do is it will, um, it will try in the middle of those two changes and you know run some command that validates whether it's good or bad. And let's say that we ran this one and it was still good. Um, and so then what get bisect will do is it will assume that all of these are good. And so it won't recheck those revisions again. And then after that, it'll again, like split this in half. It'll bi bisect it uh, and it'll try in the middle. And let's say that this one that it checked was bad. And so then it will uh, assume that all of these are bad and it will continue that process until it finds the exact commit that introduced the change in behavior. Oh, that should be. Um, but that's kind of how Git Bisect works, and now we'll show you how to use it in this particular case. <clears throat> so, I have already cloned PyCodeStyle to uh, set up this example, so let's actually CD into that in both my tabs. And we need to make a file which is going to trigger this problem. So if we go up to the original example, uh, they just used a simple function. Um, <laughs> Funny thing here, my text editor doesn't actually support adding hard tabs to a file. So yeah, whenever you press tab, it's always going to be four spaces and I just haven't implemented it yet. Uh, so we're going to actually have to fall back to previous editor and insert a hard tab here. Um, and I'll print hello world. Uh, my editor can uh, read tabs and, you know, manipulate them. So like it knows there's a tab character here and if I copy it, those those tab characters still happen, but <laughs> it doesn't, uh, there, there isn't a key combination that will let you write a hard tab currently. Um, but yeah, anyway, if we run PyCode style, you can see that, uh, well, we want that ignore W191. You'll see on the latest version, which is what you get when you clone, uh, this command is passing. But if we were to check out the old version, 2.5.0, this is the one where it was broken. And if we run that same command, you can see that we get this E117 over indented, which was the original bug. 
And so I'm going to use get bisect to find when that got fixed. Now usually, usually you'll use bisect to find when things break, but we're actually going to do the opposite today. Uh, the procedure is basically the same, you just have to flip a return code in the middle. Let's go back to master, uh, <clears throat> and I'll show you how I would bisect this. So the first thing that you need is a script that will be run on each revision that will say whether it's good, bad, or neither. Uh, I usually write mine in bash, and actually sometimes you can get away with just a one-liner. Uh, in this example, I actually used a one-liner here. Um, I used this this command here, but I'll show you how I would more generically write one of these. Uh, and we're going to do it in Python just to make it a little bit easier. So let's call it check.py uh, from, well, we don't need any imports. Uh, <laughs> if name equals main, that's what I'm trying to write here. Exit main. We're going to use sem process to check things. And generally what I do here is I write a main function that has one of three cases. So either it's a success case, an error case, or uh, an in-between case. And um, Bisect will skip the in-between cases. So one example of an in-between case is like if you were testing a behavior between point A and point B, and like somewhere in the middle it didn't compile, uh, you would just want to skip that because it doesn't give you a signal about whether it's successful or not. And for Python, what I usually do is I'll check standard error and look for like the, the traceback output. So like, uh, you know, I'll look for like traceback most recent call last. So let's let's kind of demo that. So the command that we're going to be using to validate this is um, the same command that we ran in the terminals. So, uh, uh, this one here. We'll copy that into here. Um, and we're working with sub process, so we need a sequence of strings. So we'll get that typed out, and we're going to use subprocess.run results equals subprocess.run commands and standard out equals subprocess.pipe standard error equals subprocess subprocess.pipe. Uh, this will just make it so that we can read the standard out and standard error that comes from this command without having to do some other stuff. It'll end up in this result thing here. And uh, I know this is the default, but it always surprises me with subprocess.run. We're going to set check to false. Uh, if you set check to, two, to true, this uh, call will raise an exception on non-zero exit codes. And since we're running a linter that's going to exit non-zero on problems, we want to skip that. And we want to split our stuff into three cases here. So uh, we're going to have if something return one and something else return zero. Uh, well, actually, we'll probably first do something to <laughs> return 125. And this is documented in the um, this is documented in the help for get bisect, I believe. 125. Yeah. Uh, note that the script should exit with code 0 if it's good slash old and exit with a code between 1 and 127, except for 125 if the source code is bad slash new. Uh, we're actually doing the more like old versus new case, um, which makes it a little bit easier than bad slash good, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. The special exit code 125 should be used when the current source code cannot be tested. The script exits with this code, the current revision will be skipped. Uh, 125 was chosen as the highest possible value, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, 125 is the skip case. And so what we're gonna use here is uh, that traceback text. Where was that? Um, so if we see this text anywhere in the uh, command output, then we're going to skip this. It doesn't actually matter in this case because none of the, uh, none of, <laughs> well, spoilers, none of the intermediate commits actually fail in this way, but um, you could imagine something like that. So if we see a traceback in the standard error, we're going to skip this and return 125. Um, I usually like to print something here. It doesn't actually matter. And... In our case, uh, we want to check the return code being zero as the, the new case. <laughs> so we're actually going to flip the uh, 
flip the return value here. So elif result dot return code is equal to zero. So if it's zero, we're going to return one. Otherwise, we're going to return zero. And this is kind of your, you know, you can kind of take this structure and adjust it for whatever you're working on with bisect. I think this code is right. I, what I usually do after I've written this little check code, um, let's see, we'll actually print, print new and print old, just so that we get some amount of output here. So if we run this on master, we should, <laughs> we should have gotten, uh, we should have gotten new. So let's debug this a little bit and see what happened there. Oh, I see. There's a typo here. There's a typo there. That's what happened. Okay, so now it reports new. <laughs> and if we check out 2.5.old, or 2.5.0, and run this, we should get old. That's good. And if we were to somehow break PyCode style, uh, let's just, you know, main function in here somewhere. If we, you know, put a syntax error in there, uh, we get skipped which is good. And now we'll get to the actual bisection point where we get to run some fancy commands here. So we'll go back to master. And if you run get bisect, it will tell you all of the various commands that we're going to use. Um, the ones that we're gonna use today are start, uh, bad, good, or new, old. These are syn uh, synonymous, so like, Bad is the same as old, and good is the same as... Wait, no. <laughs> good is the same as old, and bad is the same as new. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, it's it's a little bit confusing. I, I usually use bad and good, uh, but it's actually opposite. And we'll also use get bisect run. That'll tell us what command we're going to use. So let's uh, first off do get bisect start. This just puts us into the bisection mode. It doesn't actually do anything other than like set some metadata for forget. Uh, I believe it shows up in status. So you are currently bisecting. Um, you can actually do this manually, but I find that get bisect runs super speedy. Uh, so now we're gonna do get bisect old 2.5.0. So this will set the, you know, well, Let's, let's just say, uh, we'll use good and bad because that's what I use most of the time. So we'll say get bisect good to 250 and get bisect bad to origin slash master. Uh, here I'm just saying like what revision was the before and the after state. And then it'll tell me about how long it's going to take to check this. And so it says like roughly five steps. So again, like it would split it in half five times to do all those checks. And then the last thing we're gonna do is get bisect run, and we're gonna pass in that script that we made up, uh, up above. And that's just python3 check.py. And when we run this, it's going to do that. And it's gonna go really fast, so we'll, we'll review the output after it runs. But I'll press enter here. And you can see that it, um, it kept running this script over and over, and you can see like roughly however many steps remaining. Uh, this was a super fast bisection. I've also worked in code bases where it compiles a giant C++ binary, and sometimes this would take like hours. Um, but it's it's nice to be able to automate checking these. Things. You can see here like uh, this was new, this was new, this was new, this was new. Uh, but it found the first old commit here, and then it looked forward one and found the, the a new commit. So it knew that this was the first uh, the first time that it. it was was old and like what changed it to the new behavior and then at the end when it finds that one commit if it finds that one commit sometimes it doesn't sometimes there will be a, a number of commits or like you'll <laughs> you'll skip all the ones that are problematic i've had that happen before uh, but once it's done it'll print out the commit that you know changed the things it'll always use like the words bad here but this is actually the first good commit in our case because it's this one's backwards uh, but you can see, like, and, and this makes a lot of sense, expect lines to be indented eight places when tabs are used. So that was that was the change that fixed it. And it'll also tell you that bisection was su success. So, and, you, and then you can, you know, <laughs> figure out whether this was the right thing or not and proceed from there. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Git bisect, I find to be a really, really helpful tool when figuring out open source problems, so. Uh, well, and closed source too, but 
<laughs> anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things that you want me to explain or talk about, leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter or Twitch or wherever you want to find me. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh no, my command, my, my key didn't work. Uh, where's my scene? There we go.